Welcome to eLearning with Bloom's Taxonomy. In this session, we're going to look at moving online instruction into the higher orders of thinking using Bloom's Taxonomy. We will seek a basic understanding of Bloom's Taxonomy, then see how that applies to some standard activities that teachers create for online learners in whatever learning management system that they might have. First, Bloom's Taxonomy, as it has become, was a way of classifying educational objectives created by the educational scholar Benjamin Bloom. This significant contribution came through his 1956 book, Taxonomy of Educational Objectives. He believed in education and said, after 40 years of intense research on school learning in the United States as well as abroad, my major conclusion is, what any person in the world can learn, almost all persons can learn, if provided with appropriate prior and current conditions of learning. He wrote of three types of learning. The cognitive domain, that's the thinking, intellectual abilities, comprehending information, organizing ideas, evaluating information and actions. Psychomotor domain, basic motor skills, coordination, physical movement, speech development, reading readiness, handwriting, physical education, etc. And the affective domain. That has to do with the heart, feeling, emotional growth, and attitude. In this presentation, we will focus on the cognitive domain. Bloom's taxonomy is often represented in this pyramid type structure with the lower order thinking at the bottom and the higher order thinking towards the top, building from remember to understand, apply, analyze, evaluate, and create. And we'll go through each one of them one by one. The first order is remember, to recognize and recall facts and figures. This could be recognizing a date that something happened, or remembering a, a name or a number, something that relates to recalling these figures. In the next order, we have understanding. This is what the facts mean, interpreting, exemplifying, summarizing, and explaining. With applying, we apply these facts and rules and concepts and ideas. We implement them. To analyze means to break down the information into parts, organizing them into different layers that could help us to understand them better. When we evaluate, we judge that information or ideas. We critique the information. And with create, we combine the parts to make a new whole. We solve problems with new solutions. We uh, plan and produce something that is new. Bloom's taxonomy is used for evaluating curricular items to show the breadth or lack of breadth of education. Much of traditional education focuses on the lower categories, whereas the higher categories are really more preferable to move our educational activities. One preferable visualization might be stair steps because each level of cognitive thinking is important and builds on the last. There are no shortcuts to higher order thinking. However, this is also an iterative process which a student will return to the earlier steps after starting the process in a higher order. This may be most apparent in the highest orders for evaluate and create as a student may need to return to, say, the understanding level before moving on at various points in the learning process. As we mentioned, there's no shortcuts to the top of Bloom's taxonomy, but maybe in this age of technology, we can help the students along a little bit. So we have this image of an escalator. So why should we use Bloom's taxonomy? What does research and experience say? Well, first, it scales from the easier to the more difficult skills for scaffolding. Also helps you plan curriculum, identify gaps in the learning. And finally, it prepares students for a successful working future. Higher order thinking is the kind of thinking that workplaces desire. Now let's look at e-learning with Bloom's taxonomy. We'll look at examples of how to apply Blooms into our e-learning environments. No matter which LMS, learning management system, or CMS, content management system you use, if it's Canvas or Blackboard or Moodle, you should be able to apply the principles of Bloom into your learning activities. Right now, I'd like you to review the handouts. 
These handouts have question stems that will help you to think about each level of Bloom's taxonomy and how to apply them to the different learning activities. And you should be able to find the link below this video. First, let's look at content. Now, a lot of online learning seems to just present content. And unfortunately, a lot of online learning also ends just with content. That is just providing a video or some slides. And one of the biggest turnarounds you can do with your online learning is to realize it doesn't have to be a PowerPoint or a PowerPoint with narration. Why not put your students into the driver's seat? Have them direct their own learning some. If you have a topic you want to cover, allow them to research it and then create a PowerPoint presentation for the class. They may complain because spoon feeding information is so much easier, but they will learn so much more than just by listening to your presentation. There are some difficult subjects, so you'll want to consider which topics to unfold for your students. You could present an issue or a problem for them to analyze or to evaluate. Make your presentation short and put them in a discussion post. Make it so they need to listen to the end to get to the question, but expect a response every time that they will listen to the content, a response that will prompt them to think deeply. Another online learning activity is discussions. Rather than just have them regurgitate information in the lower orders from the reading, like, for instance, finding where a writer talks about blank or how many blank. Instead, have them think beyond the reading. Have them analyze. What are the problems in this reading? How is it similar to blank? Also, have them evaluate. What are the consequences of this reading? What influences will it have on us, our vocations, and the world? What are the pros and cons of the writer's position? Questions like this will move the discussion into critical thinking. Students also will have an opportunity in the discussion to respond to their classmates in critical thinking ways, if you encourage them. And in your quizzes, in the same way, your quizzes and tests can be a learning experience, not just an assessment experience. Having the students to think critically, evaluate, and analyze in order to answer the question correctly instead of just testing for information that they could look up on Google. Have them apply that information. These could be short answer questions, but multiple choice will also work. For instance, select the best response to this situation, considering what you have learned, or select any consequences there might be of this action, considering our reading, etc. Now, of any online learning activity, our assignments lend themselves to the higher order thinking of creating. Papers and written assignments are a form of creating and can be effective, but there are so many other options as well. Have the students invent a tool to do a specific task. Have them create a role play or outline a TV show on the subject. Design a poster, make a commercial, or create a marketing campaign. The possibilities are endless. There are many digital tools that are available as well. They could create a podcast or a movie, make a blog or a wiki, tell a story through animation or a slideshow. Why not mix it up for your students? They will be glad for the change, and you might be as well. If you have learned anything during this presentation, it's important that you put it into practice right away. So, I have one final Bloom challenge for you. Create one learning activity right now, like a discussion question or assignment, that would promote either evaluating or creating. Use the question stem handouts, which again are available at the link below, or do your own research into Blooms and see what kind of higher order learning you can activate. Here's some resources I use for this presentation. I highly recommend any of the reading by Crathall on Blooms Taxonomy. If you have any comments or questions, please post them below. Thanks for watching.